Hi, this is Dr. Wes Fisher, and I'd like to take a moment to quickly review the results of a national voluntary survey of U.S. physician and surgeon opinions and perspectives regarding the board certification process endorsed by the American Board of Medical Specialties. This internet-based survey was conducted by Practicing Physicians of America, a 501c6 nonprofit physician membership organization based in Texas. By way of background, before 1990, the American Board of Medical Specialties board certification process was a lifetime voluntary physician accolade that physicians uh, undertook themselves to prove to their colleagues that they had an adequate fund of knowledge to practice in their area of specialization within medicine. For years, this was the standard with doctors uh, performing continuous medical education to document uh, evidence of continuing uh, medical education. Uh, but after 1990, the American Board of Medical uh, Subspecialties uh, board certification process became time limited between seven and 10 years and physician had to repay additional fees to maintain their certification. The adverse effects of this time limited or continuous certification process are unknown. The methods for this survey collection were performed by an industry standard survey monkey platform uh, it was eight pages long with 32 questions. It was a voluntary recruitment of physicians by social media channels, and it was, it was conducted between the 12th of January and the 19th of March, 2018. Exclusion criteria for physicians that participated uh, required that they come from an uh, internet address from somewhere within the United States. They, were, uh, non they could not be a non-clinical physician researchers researchers, they had to, uh, could not be industry employed physicians, and they had to be physicians that were already board certified. The uh, flowchart for the uh, survey is as follows with the demographics collected. Then the physicians were asked if they were an MD or a doctor of osteopathy. Some questions specific to uh, osteopaths were uh, obtained. And then once uh, that differential was identified, the uh, questionnaire asked if they had ever been ABMS board certified. Uh, if so, then they, uh, the survey requested that they put specific details about how many board certificates they had and when they were acquired uh, and the perceived cost of those um, certifications. Uh, finally, after that, uh, if the, the physicians were asked if they continued on to perform maintenance or continuous certification in their area of subspecialty, and if so, uh, their reason for participation, the relevance they felt with that participation, its potential conflicts of interest, and if they felt that participation might affect their right to work. Finally, if they failed their recertification examination, there were questions specific to those so that the uh, reasons and the effects of the potential harms of that process could be identified. The results were significant in that over 7,000 physicians uh, responded uh, after the incomplete survey responses were removed. Uh, of those, 48% were women and 52% uh, were male. Uh, physician medical degrees show the preponderance to be MD degrees, but 11.4% were also doctors of osteopathy, and 1.27% had uh, were recipients of non-U.S. medical degrees. The age of the physicians uh, were fairly broad, with the vast majority over 36 years of age, um, and clearly with uh, likely more than 10 years of experience in practice. And in fact, when asked that fact, uh, nearly 66% of physicians had over 10 years of experience and only 2.1% uh, uh, were retired that uh, answered these questions. The practice setting for physicians were by and large mostly hospital employed physicians uh, with uh, representing 42%, but private practice physicians represented 27% and group practice independent physicians uh, were 17%. The physicians that responded to this survey uh, responded nationwide, with Pennsylvania being the largest group uh, state represented, but followed by California, Texas, Florida, and then many others. 
Practice specialties represented uh, were interestingly uh, evenly distributed just as physicians are distributed in the United States, with the largest group of physician respondents being family practice physicians, followed by pediatric physician and uh, patients who, or excuse me, physicians who primarily practiced internal medicine were the third largest group. 93% of the physicians who responded to this survey had been board, ABMS board certified at least once. For those who held more than uh, uh, one certificate, 19% uh, of those people had certificates acquired before 1990 and therefore did not have to participate in maintenance of certification. The estimate of, of costs, which included both uh, direct and indirect costs, including the cost of the testing, cost of the uh, study materials, cost of travel, and time away from work, for the vast majority of physicians was over $4,000. 90% of physicians believe that ABMS board certification should be a lifelong credential using CME credits to document ongoing medical education, while only 10% thought it should be a time-limited credential requiring periodic renewal. 80% of the physicians who were ABMS board certified participated in ongoing continuous certification. But why did they happen to participate in maintenance of certification? Was it to expand their knowledge base and to keep up and to assure their patients uh, had improved safety? On the contrary, most physicians did so because their hospitals or the insurance companies for which they were contracted required participation in maintenance of certification. Only 19% of physicians said that they did so to keep up with their specialty field. When asked if maintenance of certification or osteopathic continuous certification could threaten their right to work, 86.4% of the physician respondents who participated in maintenance of certification thought it could, whereas 14% of physicians thought it could not. It, when asked if they ever failed maintenance of certification or osteopathic continuous certification, a surprisingly large 8.39% or 394 answered that they had failed the examination. When asked what happened to them as a result of that failure, 390 responded. 10% uh, of those had to pay for, uh, felt they had to pay for a rescore. 7% uh, retook the examination for free. Uh, over 55% retook it uh, by paying uh, for more additional fees and 14% never retook it and elected to have their board certification expire. 10% of physicians as a result of that lost their hospital privileges, 5% lost their job, 8% were disenrolled from their insurance panel, and 4% uh, had to relocate as a result of this failure. By far and away, however, the largest group of physician uh, effects and harms that occurred were psychologic, with uh, up to 56.41% of physicians who participated in this program uh, being embarrassed, depressed, anxious, or even having, su having uh, excuse me, suicidal ideation. 17% of physicians plan to retire rather than retake their examination after failure. This has significant consequences to the number of physicians in the physician workforce available for patients. When asked if maintenance of certification or osteopathic uh, continuous certification uh, might be related to physician burnout, of the 5,805 physicians who responded to this question, uh, well over 95% felt it increased or significantly increased physician burnout. So when asking uh, what kind of limitations such a survey as this has, we have to appreciate that every survey has bias. And because of voluntary response bias, this survey may have overrepresented individuals who have strong opinions on continuous certification. However, these problems with certification still should be uh, investigated and addressed prospectively. The large sample size does not mitigate undercoverage and non-response bias, especially since only one state medical society, Pennsylvania, circulated this survey to its members. So what can physicians do about maintenance of certification? 
Well, first of all, for those who have not participated in the program, it's important that they educate themselves by going to the Practicing Physicians of America website with the subdirectory of MOC, or Maintenance of Certification. Uh, also, because of concerns that the legitimacy of recertification and repeated paying of fees uh, may have done so uh, with uh, fraudulent intent uh, and not be because of the patient's best interest, but rather the financial interest of the board, uh, Practicing Physicians of America has established a GoFundMe page to be begin pre-litigation investigation of the American Board of Internal Medicine and the American Board of Internal Medicine Foundation specifically and its uh, directors and leadership uh, to uh, investigate if additional uh, complaints should be filed against these organizations. I hope you'll uh, consider this um, as you uh, see these data, and I hope these data have been um, informative to you. Uh, thanks for taking the opportunity to uh, listen to this short presentation. Uh, physicians who would like to have information sent to uh, them uh, are welcome to contact me via Twitter or on my blog uh, if they need state-specific information for the physicians that responded uh, to this survey. Thanks again for the, your time.